Hi guys, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make a seamless pattern and a texture in Photoshop and then how to make a pattern in Illustrator. Hi guys and welcome to Kelvin Designs. My name is Kelvin and I design and that's why it's called Kelvin Designs. Click right here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get all these tutorials for free every time it comes out and click right here to get all the goodies, all these uh, free files that I'm giving away to follow up on these uh, tutorials, follow along on this episode and every past episode as well. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a pattern and a seamless pattern at that uh, using Photoshop. And then we're going to go into Illustrator and we're going to see how to make a vector pattern uh, seamless as well. Uh, we're going to take a photo of this wall here and take a little piece of it and make it a seamless pattern. And then we're going to make a houndstooth pattern using Illustrator. Really simple stuff. It's only, uh, it only takes a few minutes but it's uh, really useful. Let's get started. Hi guys, all right, so in this episode, uh, we're gonna go over some patterns and, and seamless patterns. And if you wanna get the uh, raw files to follow along this tutorial, along uh, all my other tutorials, just go to my website, kelvindesigns.com slash sign up and uh, sign up your name and email and you'll have all the uh, raw files to follow along this tutorial and every other one. All right, so uh, to start, we're actually gonna start in Lightroom and I've loaded this uh, image, which you can download in the uh, goodies for this episode, if you sign up to the newsletter. And it's a photo of a wall I took, and uh, my white balance is actually pretty far off, so we're just gonna fix a few things before we go and transform this into a seamless pattern. So to start, uh, I'm here in the develop module in Lightroom, and I'm just going to take this little eyedropper and say, you know, this is my white point. And that'll, uh, as you can see, just change my white balance completely. And let's just go and check one other thing, which is the profile correction. And it's gonna take out all the vignetting that the lens that I used to make this. Uh, so it took that out, which is pretty good. Okay, so uh, once this is done, I'm not gonna do that much more on here. And hopefully it's pretty flat, so that's pretty good. I'm just gonna right click on the image here and say edit in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm gonna let that open up. And here we go. All right, so we're in Photoshop. I'm just gonna hide Lightroom for now so it's a little cleaner. And I'm gonna hide the web browser. Okay, so um, there's a number of different ways to make this into a seamless pattern. And I'm gonna show you what uh, I usually use. Now, this is actually a pretty big photo, much bigger than usual uh, for a pattern. And if I was actually making a background for a website or something like that, I could literally use this entire image. It's quite a bit um, of texture here. In most cases, you wanna be able to just use a repeating pattern in a smaller format. So the first thing we gotta do, um, a seamless pattern means that it, it, it needs to start and end seamlessly. And what that means is, just to show you, if I went in here and said offset this image, and let's just offset this by, uh, 500 by 500, it's actually not nearly enough. Let's just do 3500 by 3500, something like that. Down should be more like 2000. Okay, now you can see that the four corners don't match at all. Different colors, different uh, shades, uh, different luminosity and all that, so it doesn't work out. All right, so I'm gonna cancel this out. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer and uh, I'm going to invert it, so image, uh, and it's actually command I, so like this, and I'm going to right click here and convert to smart object. And the only reason I'm doing this is because if I do any effects on a smart object, I can, like a Gaussian blur, uh, I can go and manipulate that effect, I'll show you in a second. Here I'm gonna turn this uh, into uh, overlay mode, and then I'm going to go and add a uh, Gaussian blur and blur that out quite a bit. And I wanna get decent detail, but I wanna get rid of any uh, color changes, all right? So if I go too close, I'm, I'm losing a lot of my grain. If I go a little higher, I, I maintain that grain, but I'm flattening out the uh, color. So um, there you go. So show you and now you see this Gaussian blur here it's a smart object so I can just double click in here if I want to go back and make a modification I can still do that uh, as opposed to just a standard filter that's applied this is actually non-destructive 
All right, so if I go before and after, and uh, it's, it's better, it's not perfect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command, Alt, Shift, E, and that's going to make a new layer of the visible. And we're going to uh, see what the offset looks like now. And we'll do another uh, 3,500 and what would we do, 2,000 or something like that. All right, so we're much better. We're still not perfect, but we're much better. And granted, we're only gonna use a piece of this. We don't wanna use the entirety. It's a huge file to 20, 25%. I mean, let's take a look at the uh, pixel size here, 5,000 by 3,400. It's, 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 it's uh, much more than we need. So for this, uh, what we're going to do is simply take a smaller piece uh, and with the marquee tool here, I'm gonna click, hold down, and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and that way I'm making a perfect square and take something, something like this. Oh, I have a uh, fixed size. I'm gonna go to normal and deselect command D and make a square here. And I'm gonna try to take something that's, um, doesn't have any huge marking, something that if repeated a thousand times or a lot of times, doesn't just stand out. So try to take something neutral. Uh, I'll try something like this and then I will uh, copy this either here copy or command C and then I will create a new file and it's it's basically has already the uh, the information from what I copied hit OK and then I can paste all right so this is my texture and um, I still would have an issue um, let's make this a little simpler let's make this 800 by 800 and the 240 doesn't really matter at this point just reduced it a little bit. That way it's round numbers and it's easier. And if I were to go and say filter and offset it now, now I'm gonna do 400 by 400, so it's really half and half. I'm much closer, I don't have that many anomalies, but you can still see that it's not seamless. So let's just uh, make a, a duplicate of this just so we can go back if we need to. And so you're gonna go and filter other offset and we're gonna do 400 and 400. Make sure that wrap around is on there and uh, hit OK. Now, I can simply take the, uh, the clone stamp tool over here and I'm going to clone out some of these lines, all right? If I right click, I can see what I have. I have 33. I don't want my hardness to be too soft. Uh, I want it to be kind of in between. Too soft will make for blurred uh, detail, which I don't really want. And 33 is about right. So uh, hit return. And then now I hold down the Alt key to say where I'm sampling from something like here, and then I'm gonna go in here and brush, take it from here, brush over here, and all the way up to the top, and do it over here as well, so hold Alt. I'm making it so you cannot see where those pieces meet. All right, something like this, and I'm gonna take it over here, all the way to the end, and then down the middle here. Okay, and then now theoretically, if I were to say uh, filter and offset again, let's just do uh, 250 by 250. I shouldn't be able to see any, I shouldn't see where it meets, it's, it's all, uh, 450 by 450, I, I can't tell where it's joining. So if I do 400 by 400, it's perfectly in the center and really I cannot see where they meet. So I have, I actually have a seamless pattern at this point. So uh, if I go and I select all, so Command A, and I go to edit and I hit define pattern and I'll call this sandstone, hit okay. Now, if I uh, were to go back here, deselect, I'll make a new layer and let's just, uh, with default colors, put white in the front and I'll delete to fill that with white. If I double click on here and say pattern overlay, so I'm now accessing all my patterns and these are pre-built ones from Photoshop, but the last one over here is the one I just did. And as you can tell, you cannot see where they start and you can see that there's a repeating pattern here, but it's seamless. So we've created a seamless pattern and I can make this bigger or smaller and they are seamless. All right, so now we have, uh, whoops, I should have just hit okay on that. And if I go back in here, 
hit OK, I now have that seamless pattern. And that is how you make a seamless pattern in Photoshop. All right, and uh, in Illustrator, we're gonna create a uh, pattern in Illustrator. Illustrator has a really, has a really cool tool. And uh, let's just go into Illustrator over here. And uh, we can actually hide Photoshop for now. And uh, if we create a new document, let's just uh, make this web for now. Just to make it easy, we'll make it 1080 by 800. Doesn't really matter for this. Um, and we, I want to create. I want to show you how to create a seamless pattern vector, which means it's not pixels. And um, I actually pulled up in Google Images. I did a search here for a uh, uh, houndstooth. It's a pretty common pattern. And um, I want to essentially just duplicate this, but as a vector pattern. So um, I can. I mean, this is a pretty standard pattern. I can take it from anywhere. Um, I'm going to simply uh, make a screenshot. So in Mac, it's Command uh, Command Shift Three, and I've made a screenshot. You can see it over here. So um, I can now go in here and place, and I go to my desktop, and this is my screenshot. Okay, and I'm going to place it in here. Okay, I actually don't need all this. I just wanted just to make it easy to trace this. If I go to my layers, I can just go and lock this layer make a new layer, and now uh, whatever I draw on top um, will be, uh, I, can't, I can't move around this image. So this is just temporary. So let's, uh, to start off, uh, whatever the pattern's gonna be, which in this case it's gonna be the shape right here. So I'll just take the uh, pen tool and make sure that I have black, or actually make sure I have no stroke. And to make it easier to see, well, instead of using black, let's just make a green color, something like this. and. Actually, no fill. Let's make it uh, outline. That way we can see a little bit what we're doing. All right, so I can click, and if I hold down the shift key, it it, it maintains a 45 degree angle, uh, so 90, 45, etc. So I'm gonna go here, hold it down, click right there, and then click right there, and pretty simple stuff, something like this. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that, and, and then I'm gonna actually, I should have taken I'm going to click here to continue that. Go right there, somewhere here, and I've made half of it. All right, so now I've made this half, and I actually want, I'm going to use a pretty cool little tool in Illustrator. If I go to uh, the, uh, the appearance, there we go, I can say create an effect, and I'm going to hit transform. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit, just to make it a, a little easier to see here. Uh, Command plus to zoom in. And uh, now if I go to effect and distort transform, transform, and I'm going to say, I would like one copy, hit the preview button, and let's just move it a little bit for now, see what we're dealing with. So I made one copy, I want it to reflect, and then I want it to rotate by 90 degrees. And hard for me to see what we're doing here. Let's just move it over a little bit. Okay, and if I re reflect, uh, sorry, and it looks like it needs to be minus 90. There we go. Okay, so now I have a perfect reflection at that right angle. So I can just move this over until it meets the middle, which looks like it's this, 18 pixels in this case. And now I have a perfect reflection, so um, hit OK and I can actually fill it. Ah, and this is where I reveal that it's not a perfect reflection. So click on a transform again, and instead of 18, let's try 17, hit the preview button here. That looks pretty accurate. Okay, hit okay, and uh, I want this to be expanded now. I don't want it to just, it's right now, this is the only shape. I want it to include the reflection I've created. So I go to object and expand appearance. So now I have both. And if I go to my layers, I can open this up and I can see that it's actually a group made of groups. So I don't want all that. So I'm gonna click on this and Command Shift G to ungroup and do the same again. So now I have two clean paths, except you can see that in the middle here, it's not quite perfect. So I'm going to take the uh, white arrow tool, select, I really have two paths in there, or two uh, anchor points rather. And I'm going to hit Command J to join. And you can do this by going to path, join and do the same thing over here, object, path, join. Okay, so now I uh, now I know that it's a single shape and we're good. So 
Um, once you have this done, I can uh, select this, and we can actually hide this other layer, make this a uh, easier color to look at, something like black, uh, and zoom out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the object and pattern make. Okay, it says the new pattern has been added to the swatches panel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so thank you. It's going to make a new pattern. And uh, now this pattern creator is pretty incredible. It's telling me the size of my pattern, but essentially I want this to be close, closer. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit again here. Uh, if I look at the uh, pattern that we took originally, you see that it's a continuous line. The black and the white seem to replicate itself. So right now this is much bigger. So uh, to do that, you actually have to shrink this. So let's go and test this out. 40 by 40, seems like it's too much. So let's try 45 by 45. And you can play with this until 46. I'm using the up and down arrows here up to, that looks pretty close. So 47 by 47 pixels actually look uh, it looks accurate and I've created a pattern. Now there are many other options here. I can space it out differently and so on, but for this pattern, this is the right this is the right option. So I hit done. And now if I zoom out and if I were to create a uh, rectangle over here, uh, let's close this. And if I go to my swatches here, I have this new pattern I created. Look at that. And so now I can uh, I can have this pattern. It's pretty simple to use, and that is how you that is how simple it is to make a pattern in Illustrator. And there you go. All right, guys. I hope you liked that episode, and uh, please share this episode if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get uh, sign up to the newsletter if you want the goodies to follow along with this tutorial. I'll see you in the next episode.